Hello and welcome to another Tech Talk Thursday. My name is Ray and in today's video tutorial we're going to be taking a look at how we can configure API pagination within our Synapse pipeline. In front of me I am at the RecRes website. This is a tool that supports calling real APIs. Uh, this is typically intended for your front end, but what we're going to use this for is to use this as our source data so that we can land it into our data lake. And the call that we're going to be interested in is this users, list users uh, method. And what I want us to first look at is a couple of components within this call. So here you can see this gives us the total number of pages. So you can see that there are two and that I am on page two and that there are six entries per page. We can think of this as six rows per page. And for this particular method, there are 12 records in total. Now this is gonna become important for us because as we need to iterate through these pages to get these records, we're going to need to use this data uh, in some way. So I am now going to navigate back over to Synapse Analytics, and uh, we have a pipeline here, a generic one, that we are going to use in order to page through this web call. So in order for this to happen, we need to first pull in a web activity. And this is going to accept a URL. So I'm going to paste in that URL that we just saw in order to retrieve that data set. This is using a get method. So we're going to pass in get. And this is not going to use any authentication or it uses anonymous uh, in order for, <clears throat> for us to validate and, and call the API. So I'm going to hit debug so we can see what data gets back or gets returned to us. You can see that it was successful. And now this is showing us page one. Again, there are a total of two pages and six, uh, six records per page. And this is the information that's going to be useful for us as we configure uh, paginating through the API. So the next thing that we're going to want to bring in is a for each activity. So I'm going to link this together. And the items here is going to be an array. Well, what we need to bring back is an array. So what we would need to do in this particular case is find a result set that would span out the number of times that we need to iterate through this web activity. So as we saw, we know that the beginning page is page one and that this ends on page two. Now there is a nice function that uh, Synapse has here within the uh, pipeline expression builder that's called range. And that's going to do exactly that for us. The range function takes a uh, couple of numbers as input. And what it does is it will explode the number of items in that array based on the input that you provide within the function. So what I mean by that is let's imagine that we have a range function and I put in one through 10. What's going to happen with this range function is it will give me the entire array uh, to use. So I'll get the values returned as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to 10. This is what my return value would be based on this input. So for us, we need to dynamically specify that input, and that's going to be web activity dot total pages. So let me go ahead and paste that in. And now what this is going to return to us is, because we know that total pages is two, is the array of one and two. That's exactly what we're going to need in order to determine how many times we need to uh, call the copy activity uh, as we try to get our results that's back. So I'm going to go now into the for each activity and bring over a copy activity. <clears throat> and we are now going to create a brand new linked service so if I go here for rest, you can see that we need to create a linked service. So I'm just going to paste in that same URL that we're using with our copy activity. This is going to use anonymous authentication. And if I test this, hopefully this comes back successful, and it does. And now we can configure our data set. <clears throat> so we're going to remove the default uh, pagination rules. And what we're going to do instead is if I open this data set is 
make this relative URL dynamic. So this is this is the part that actually does the paging. So ordinarily in a API call, what we would get back is a question mark page equals some type of value. So in this particular case, if I said I wanted page one, we would get page one if I wanted page two, so on and so forth. Now this is why we needed to set up the range function in order to get those values that we can pass in. So so because this needs to come from our web activity within somewhat of our lookup activity, we are going to add a new parameter and we will call this page. We'll make sure that this is parameterized. We'll click OK. And now we can add that value. So <clears throat> we can do items. This is the, uh, this is the uh, value that we want returned. However, now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we add the rest of the syntax here. And we're going to need to use uh, string interpolation. And now this should be able to take the value from the web activity, pass it in as one and two for each copy activity run. We're going to now configure our sync. So this will just land into our data lake in Parquet format. I will use the existing link service that I have, and I will put this into the raw container in a users folder that I have. So we'll click OK. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that our mapping is correct. So let's go over to mapping. Let us import schema. So this looks about the correct default value that we'll want in place. Click OK. And we want to add the collection. So let me clear and then re-import so that we know what collection should be in place here. Uh, let me do new mapping. Actually, that doesn't, that still doesn't look right. So let me go ahead and import schema with data mapping there. Okay, that looks better. So now what we're going to need to do is remove some of the metadata that we're not looking for. So I will delete all of this. And now this will give me what I am interested in, and that's going to be the ID, email, first name, last name, and avatar. And now this is configured. Right. I would recommend that we do this in a dynamic fashion. I do have other videos that show how to do dynamic mapping. I would highly encourage you to look at those. Right. We don't want to ensure that this copy activity is only set to the schema. We would like it to, to be metadata driven. Uh, so I would highly encourage looking at that dynamic mapping video that was created. But now that this is configured, we can go ahead and run our pipeline and see what happens. Okay, so you can see that two copy activities have taken place, and that's because we know that it's running through page one and as well as page two. They are in progress, and you can see that both of them have finished. So now what we're going to do is go back to our raw container under our users folder. You can see it's right there, and the time aligns to 1149, so you know it just ran. And we're going to go ahead and select to make sure that we have our full set of data. Right? I don't want this specific file, but really I want everything in this directory. So let me do start out star. We do expect to see 12 records in this particular case. And let me order it just so we can see it a little bit better. And there you have it. We have the 12 records from that API call, and they have been paged through appropriately. So that's going to cover API pagination for this video. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you learned of something of value today, and we're going to see you in the next one.